and Kama Sutra and has always been a social crusader. She's a lady who speaks from her heart. Pooja, I'd like to ask you, what does it feel like to be a savvy woman? What does it feel like to be a savvy woman? Well, I'd be very honored to be a savvy woman because um, you only get one of them a month. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and, and it's obviously uh, something that's very close to my heart because imagine as a group, uh, I've grown up with my entire career as being stardust and savvy and, you know, all these wonderful um, publications that the society and, you know, it's, it was so integral to our childhood because that's all there was. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have any other form of any other media that informed us as to what was going on um, in the world of glamour and entertainment and it was a big high to be on the cover of a magazine and magna cover was like the premium and you just wanted to be there and so it's so nice i mean i was um, i've been on a couple of magna covers before but you think that but she salvaad you're still on the cover so it's, uh, it's wonderful <laughs> and I, I think i think for me hot is 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 it's just something it's First is the chemistry. I think that's incredibly important because there has to be chemistry. If it either is there or it's not there, chemistry is not something you can create. Um, that's the most important factor uh, in a relationship. And, um, and I think in addition to that, it would be a persona uh, that, that you come in with. It, not necessarily the way you look. Like say for example, someone like Simon Baker, he's exceptionally hot. You know, I have never met him, but it's just the whole persona he comes in with, the mentalist, if you've seen the series. You know, it is something roguish and, and interesting and charming and, 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 and quirky and, 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 and decently indecent, you know, about, about him. Uh, I think I think there's a slight element of, of, of craziness uh, for me that is uh, always important. Um, unpredictability, but predictably unpredictable. Uh, fun, spunky, um, out of the box. You know, um, feminism essentially would be a movement started to gather rights for women to make sure that we are on an equal platform. Uh, especially given the fact we had a largely patriarchal society and therefore, you know, we're forced to outperform and, 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 and overdo the whole thing to the extent you could burn your bras to a point, you know, uh, where you don't need to do that, but you have to go to an extreme to be able to set back an order where you find some sort of balance. Um, unfortunately for me, the way I look at it, I mean, of course, feminism is extremely important because, you know, there has to be a large surge and a large energy movement to, to give us that space that we deserve. Um, but I think sometimes what happens is feminists tend to go overboard. And I think I think the whole concept of men bashing for women empowerment has come to a picture, which is unnecessary, unimportant, and unfair. Um, and I think I think when you try to put down men by you know putting a man down to put a woman up, that's not feminism to me. Feminism is putting up a woman because she deserves to be in that spot and position, irrespective of what's around her. You don't need to put anyone down to put anyone. Both parents, Kabir Kreti and Nate Pratima Kreti, were rule breakers. So how was it going <coughs> with them in their shell? You know, I grew up uh, as a rebel to that. So, uh, you know, when most kids were rebelling against their parents and smoking cigarettes and possibly doing drugs, uh, I grew up not doing cigarettes and not doing drugs because I saw so much of that around me growing up. So I think I think my parents heralded the whole flower power generation, which was the whole sex, drugs, rock and roll, and free spirit, and hippie culture. And, you know, so I, I grew up in an environment where all that was very normal artists, and thinkers, and philosophers, and painters, and you know that whole space was there. And, and, and strangely, I remember being very young and saying, you know, this is all fine, but it's very tiny. And I still remember that moment when I said, I never want any of this in my life. So your identity comes across as that of a very strong, very bold woman. And uh, you being in an industry where you're a celebrity, you're an anchor, uh, you're a columnist, you get positive responses. But on the other hand, you also get negative responses. So then how do you deal with criticism and still move on and give it your best at what you do? Well, if I can't take criticism, I should say compliments. Because if I believe the compliments, I should believe the criticism too. Right. So you should believe the criticism and say where is it coming from? Is it misplaced or is it your lack of compliments? People give you compliments on the stupidest things and you know it's not a real compliment, but you still take it. 
right? It's your choice whether you choose to accept it or reject it. You know, if I tell you, for example, you are a fat pink elephant with a white flower on your head, would you believe me? No. So if I tell you something nasty about yourself, why would you believe me? It's up to you to accept a compliment or accept an insult. You know, it is, it is some part of you resonates with what they said. Therefore, you choose to react to it in a certain manner. Otherwise, somebody tells you something, how does it impact you? How does it change your life? How sad that that person is suffering in their head so badly that this, this construed notion about who you are or what you do, but how nice that they're so bothered about your life. How nice that they're willing to extricate themselves from their boring, mundane existences and actually dive into your life to actually make judgment and, and be on top of it and, and, and keep scrutinizing you. How wonderful to be so important, you know. I mean, that's the way I look at them. So. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's all perspective. Everything is perspective. It's just how you choose to see things. Um, you know, you, it's only you that empowers yourself. <coughs> uh, recently, our government took a very good step, bold step, uh, to increase the stress of uh, black women voters. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> move. You know, it's something that we've been going on about. I think the greatest problem in this country is the corruption uh, on every single level. It's been from the highest uh, levels of authority to the janitors working in some office who demand some money to push a pile through. Uh, I think, uh, you know, whether it's gas connections or whatever it is, on every level of common man to the rich man has been impacted by corruption. Uh, all the cess money that's collected, it filters down the whole system and at the end of the day what you have, you have midday meal schemes where, you know, uh, the most watery, pathetic food is being served. You have, you have uh, schools apparently that are open where there are no teachers teaching. You know, so I think corruption has been a massive issue in our country and, and anything, any move that in any manner uh, stems corruption or makes all those people with all the horrible money suddenly WTF! What happened? <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's fab. Thank you. We'd like to uh, end the proceeding by thanking Pooja and all you wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you.